All right, let's uh, get started. We were talking about um, uh, Paul's journey to Jerusalem and the fact that he was aware uh, that he would need to go there. And from there, you know, many trials would uh, begin in his life. Uh, so we're going to read about what happened in Jerusalem. So uh, we will mostly go a little fast uh, over the you know the next few chapters even up until chapter 24 we can uh, you know just read away because what we see there is paul's trial so he will have an uproar by the mob um, in jerusalem he goes to the temple but then he's dragged out of the temple uh, he is um, uh, caught by the guards he's beaten so many things happen to him but from there you know uh, this accusation you know against him that uh, uh, he's dishonoring the land he's dishonoring the law all that will be uh, tested okay so he will go into trial we will see that from jerusalem he is sent to caesarea where he will be imprisoned for two years uh, he will have a trial before uh, you know it, it'll just go up in in uh, the the uh, structure so initially it's it's the roman guards in jerusalem and they uh, send him over to caesarea and there'll be uh, a a governor felix and then his successor festus uh, and then also you know agrippa will king agrippa will come to visit there and so uh, paul on his own you know he doesn't have any lawyers and we also know that he's a very learned man uh, uh, with with his own uh, you know ability he tries to defend himself so uh, all this will go on uh, till chapter 24 where he is giving a defense for himself unfortunately not only a defense but you will see that um, he will also share the truth of the lord jesus with these officials high ranking officials he's not afraid to tell them about jesus and the fact that jesus is christ unfortunately uh, he doesn't see a response from these officials also you know they don't accept christ even when they understand uh, that you know what paul is saying is true so that is a very unfortunate thing and then after this you know after meeting with uh, king agrippa he uh, makes an appeal to caesar as a roman citizen one had the right to directly appeal to the highest authority so uh, he makes an appeal to the uh, roman emperor at that time nero was the uh, emperor in charge uh, and so we will then see paul's travel out of the imprisonment so this is the first imprisonment from here he will travel to rome italy okay uh, he will travel to rome uh, and it's more of a sea route that he will take to go to uh, uh, italy rome it's further away from all these places you know we saw the galatia region the macedonian region the achaia region so this is beyond that uh, the um, uh, uh, Italy. So he'll go to Italy. Uh, and then eventually, you know, in his heart, he also has a desire to go to Spain. So many, many different things that, uh, you know, Paul may have wanted to do. Uh, we don't have the details, you know, after the second um, Im imprisonment of Paul, he'll go to Rome over there. Also, he will be, uh, uh, he, he will be under custody. Okay. And he'll use that time in Rome to continue to preach the gospel under custody okay so that is again something we will observe but acts chapter 28 will sort of end very abruptly and we don't know what all the causes were uh, for this chapter for ending very abruptly you know we would like to find out what happened to paul uh, you know after this uh, imprisonment and how what kind of ministry did he do where did he go but after chapter 28 what we would need to do is we will have to reconstruct the life of paul based on many of his letters which he has written to the various churches so in total um, uh, he wrote 14 epistles okay apostle paul wrote 14 epistles to the different churches instructing them uh, in their uh, context so uh, and 
when was he writing these epistles he was writing these epistles you know throughout his journey as uh, he was ministering in different places he would write back to uh, other churches where he had already been and he had done his ministry so uh, i'll try and share the details of you know these letters and where these letters were written and all that in the concluding class um, but today i'm just painting a picture so we understand what exactly is going on so we will get into these chapters maybe we'll just take time to read them uh, quickly in this session that's what we'll do but before that let me also show you uh, another map in the last class we had a question about you know where these places where is it in the current times so i wanted to show you a recent map and uh, we'll get an idea and also there was this question i think uh, brother manohar asked about silas so i think silas is not journeying with paul anymore um he was left behind in thessalonica uh, i suppose yeah somewhere in the macedonian city to continue building up the believers when paul paul left that region and later we see that silas actually helped write the epistle written by peter apostle peter first peter second peter um peter gives credit to silas silas is also known as silvanus so he gives credit to silvanus for the writing of uh, the letter because obviously you know peter was a fisherman he is not like paul uh, so well educated able to write letters eloquently so uh he took silvanus's help or silas's help to actually write that uh, epistle to the churches so uh, that's just a little bit about uh, silas okay give me a moment i will share my screen i'll show you a recent map so then you can correlate and make connections yes i hope you can see it everyone can you okay great uh so here we are this is like the 2022 map which we have uh now we know that it has been divided uh, into various countries so just have a look you know at uh, this map here uh, we are talking about the asian region so this is in asia right now and then you kind of move on to europe okay so europe you have italy over here uh, and then you know paul will also make a mention that he wanted to go to spain so you have the region of europe uh, and uh, remember we talked about ethiopian uh, eunuch and people coming from africa so you have the african uh, continent uh, down below so all of what we are reading the book of acts is unfolding in this entire region so uh, it's it's amazing isn't it that those days when they did not have transport the way we have they did not have um, uh, you know uh, internet uh, they didn't have all the facilities which we have today but in a short period of time about 3 decades as you study about the life of paul 3 decades he covered this this entire region and it was not just him he raised up many uh, leaders uh, we we could even say hundreds of leaders and uh, you know so many different churches it is enlisted uh, by the names that are mentioned in the book of acts at about 40 40 churches right 40 churches were um, planted by paul and uh, also in association with some of his leaders so in this entire region in three decades here is israel for us you know israel um, uh, judea all all those regions remember antioch of syria you have syria here today so syria and then your galatia region is nothing but uh, turkey and you know they they want to move uh move into the asian region right this way uh, mycia bithynia but god leads them to macedonia so macedonia is over here greece even achaia is part of greece right now achaia where is ephesus where are the seven churches of revelation uh, they are in this turkey region right now 
Okay, uh, so yeah, this is the map for us. And later, Paul will travel. Uh, he's in Jerusalem, S Jerusalem, Caesarea, uh, Caesarea, and from there you will see him, you know, making a journey uh, by sea. So Mediterranean Sea, he will go to Italy, right? He'll go to Italy and uh, go to Rome. So that's how things are. Just so you can get an idea, get a good picture of what exactly is happening. Thank you, Pastor. Show yes. You this map. Ah, no, no problem, brother. Yeah, thank you. All right. So let's proceed then. Um, let's continue from verse 15. Acts 21, verse 15 onwards. Uh, somebody could please read till verse 25. We'll talk a little bit about it and then you know move on to the next uh, uh, set of verses. So Acts 21, verses 15 through 25. Can I read first? Yes, yes, brother, please. After this, we started on our way up to Jerusalem. Some of some of the dis disciples from Caesarea accompanied us and brought us to the home of Manson, uh, Man Manasson, where we were, where we where we were to stay. He was a man from Cyprus and one of the early disciples. When he, when he was arrived at Jerusalem, the brothers and sisters received us warmly. The next day, Paul and the rest of us went to see James and all the elders were present. The Paul greeted them and reported in detail what God had done among the Gentiles through his ministry. When they heard this, they praised God and then they said to Paul, you are you see brother how many thousands of jews have believed and all of them are zealous for the law they have been informed that you teach all the jew who live among the gentiles to turn away from moses telling them not to circumcise their children or live according to our custom what shall we do they will certainly hear that you have come so do so do what we tell you there were four men with us who made us who have made a vow take these men join their purification rites and pay their expenses so that they can have their heads shaved then everyone will know that there is no truth in these reports about you but but that you yourself are living in obedience to the law thank you Okay, uh, thank you, brother, for reading that. Um, we will also uh, just read verse twenty-five. Could you could you please read that as well? Sure, sure. As for the Gentile Gentile believers, we have returned to them our decision: what they should abstain from food sacrificed to idols, from blood from the meat of strangled animals and from sexual immorality. OK, sure. Thank you. Um, so as we can understand here, Paul is now in Jerusalem. Pastor, you're muted. Okay. Oh, sorry. Can you hear everyone? OK, yeah, thank you. Uh, so yes, as we can fine. see, yeah, as we can see, Paul is now in Jerusalem. In Jerusalem, uh, we also have the apostles. We have um, the Church of Jerusalem, which is headed by James. So uh, those are the references here where Paul and his team, they go to meet with the apostles, uh, to meet with uh, James as well. Um, and they share. So Paul shares about the ministry and how God has, uh, uh, through him, touch the lives of many many gentiles and you know he reports so this is a wonderful practice as well you know they share look i went for ministry and all these things have happened uh, and others get to rejoice in it so we notice that the leaders of jerusalem they praise god for what god was doing in and through paul's life uh, then you know we move on uh, we see that the leaders in jerusalem 
oppressed Paul and say, many Jews have now come to believe uh, in the Lord Jesus. But here is the issue. They have heard in verse 21, but they have been informed about you. So this is all hearsay. This is all uh, rumors. Okay, These are all uh, accusations and allegations against Paul. So there are people who are uh, creating these rumors against Paul. So verse 21, but they have been informed about you that you teach all the Jews who are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses. Did Paul actually do that? No, he didn't. But people, because he's ministering among the Gentiles, there is a rumor about him that he's asking the Jews to forsake Moses. What else are they saying? Saying that they ought not to circumcise their children, not to walk according to the customs. So Paul had an image among the Jews that he had asked the Jews to forsake Moses, forsake the customs, which are part of the Jewish culture. So the elders of the church, the apostles, in their wisdom, give Paul a suggestion. And they say, look, Paul, we feel that because people perceive you in this way, and it's a, it's a, a wrong perception, how about we do something thing to uh, you know let people see you for who you are you are not a person who forsakes jewish traditions we know that but the people don't understand it so uh, let's do this there are four men who need to go to the temple and you know they will pay their vows how about you go along with them, you pay for them, you go along with them. So in a way, what this will do, this action will do is it will show that you are not forsaking these four men, you know, who are making vows. That means you are not forsaking the customs and the traditions of the Jews. You are uh, in encouragement of the customs and traditions. Uh, and so the Jews will know that, hey, Paul is not the kind of person um, that we have been, you know, told. Uh, about so do that you also go along with them so that is what you know they they advised paul uh, and we will see that paul will actually take that advice and he'll go to the temple not just to worship but also to um uh you know sort of uh clear the air that he's not against Moses, he's not against Jewish customs and traditions. But then again, you know, they reiterate that uh, the instruction which was given to the Gentiles, remember in Acts 15, there was a decree. They took it with them. They went and uh, shared what was written in the letter to the Antioch church and said, Gentiles, you don't have to follow any Jewish traditions uh, to be born again, but you please be careful that you don't offend the Jewish brethren with, with uh, you know, your practices, such as uh, they had said, having things which are offered to idols from blood, from uh, things strangled, you know, stay away from these things, stay away from sexual immorality. So that applies to the Gentiles. Uh, however, Paul, you need to show that you do uphold Jewish customs. OK, so now let's move on from verse 26 all the way to verse 40. Uh, who is up to reading this long section? OK, yes, Asha, go ahead. When the seven days were almost completed, the Jews from Asia, seeing him in the temple, stirred up the whole crowd and laid hands on him, crying out, Men of Israel, help! This is the man who is teaching everyone everywhere against the people and the law in this place. Moreover, he even thought, brought Greeks into the temple and has defiled uh, us. Sorry, so, I shall interrupt. From where did you start reading? 27, is it? Okay, 26 also, please. Then Paul took the man, and the next day he purified himself along with them and went into the temple, giving notice when the days of purification would be fulfilled and the offering president presented for each one of them. When the seven days were almost completed, the Jews from Asia, seeing him in the temple, stirred up the whole crowd and laid hands on him, 
crying out, None of Israel, help! This is the man who is teaching everyone, everywhere, against the people and the law and this place. Moreover, he even brought Greeks into the temple and has defiled this holy place. For they had previously seen Tro Trophimus petition with him in the city, and they supposed that people had brought him into the temple. Then all of the city was stirred up and the people ran together. They seized Paul and dragged him out of the temple, and at once the gates were shut. And as they were seeking to kill him, word came to the tribune of the cohort that all the Jerusalem was in confusion. He at once took soldiers and centurions and ran down to them. And when they saw the tribune and the soldiers, they stopped beating Paul. Then the tribune came up and arrested him and ordered him to be bound with two chains. He inquired who he was and what he had done. Some, some in the crowd were shouting one thing, some another. And as he could not learn the facts because of the uproar, he ordered him to be brought into the barracks. And when he came to the steps, he was actually carried by the soldiers because of the violence of the crowd. For the mob of the fo people followed, crying out, away with him. As Paul was about to be brought into the barracks, he said to the tribe, May I say something to you? And he said, Do you know, Greek, are you not the Egyptian then who recently stirred up a revolt and led the 4,000 men of the Assyrians out of the wilderness? Paul replied, I am a Jew from Tarsus in Sotia, a citizen of no obscure city. I beg you, permit me to speak to the people. And when he had given him permission, Paul standing on the steps, motioning with his hand to the people. And when there was a great hush, he addressed them in the Hebrew language, saying, All right, so uh, whatever transpired is quite clear there. So Paul goes to the church, goes to the temple, uh, but you know there were people from Asia, there were Jews from Asia who noticed him, and obviously they had seen him in Ephesus uh, teaching um, people from many different regions. So uh, they piled up some accusations against him, and they said that this man teaches against the Jews and the customs, and he even brought a uh, Greek into the temple. So this was, uh, you know, a person called Trophimus, uh, who was from the Asian region. So we don't know whether, you know, he was, uh, he um, uh, tagged along with Paul and he was outside the temple. Uh, but, you know, they came up with the story and an uproar began against Paul. Now, we know that in the Roman Empire, an uproar was not at all a good thing because then you would have uh, the the emperor sort of you know take notice of that place and then they would take charge uh, of all the ministries in that region so they did not want an uproar so their first attempt was to quieten the uproar uh, so immediately when there's all this chaos going on paul is dragged out and you know people people are uh, uh, ready to to harm him the commander comes you know and he takes uh, paul away from that situation and in the commander's mind he has assumed that you know paul is uh, some kind of a uh, foreigner uh, but then you know paul using his identity you see do you recall even when in in philippi uh, he informed that he is uh, a roman citizen you know he's a jew his value went up they were so scared because uh, getting roman citizenship was a very tough thing like being a roman citizen was a big deal in those times uh, and so you know uh, paul over here he reveals his identity to the commander and he says uh, can will you give me an opportunity to speak? So in verse 39, Paul said, I am a Jew from Tarsus in Cilicia, citizen of no mean city, and I implored you, permit me to speak to the people. So uh, when Paul shares his identity, you know, he's using his uh, wisdom. Uh, and so he's using uh, this, he's playing this card of, hey, you know, I am a law law abiding citizen, uh, and I, I am also a Jew. Uh, I'm not a foreigner. I'm not an Egyptian, uh, the way you think I am. Uh, and so give me an opportunity to speak to these people. So 
uh, he is in that temple area and look at paul you know he looks at this also as a ministry opportunity we will see that he'll actually preach about jesus and, and a lot of what he shares will also contain uh, some parts of his experience uh, on the road to damascus so you know from passages like this we reconstruct what exactly would have happened okay so uh, we will read acts chapter 20 too, but before that, um, I noticed uh, Shri Kumar has raised his hand. Uh, yes, uh, Shri Kumar. Yeah, thank you, Pastor. Pastor, uh, I just want to know that uh, when the Paul was knowing that even though um, he was warned by the prophets and he was knowing that he is he's supposed to face this danger, then um, even though he's knowing those things, but if you um, if you uh, under, uh, no, read this um, from the passage, um from 25 uh, 24 where you know the purification and the you know, paul uh did the purification with them and um actually he was actually trusted with the gospel the bible says but then uh, and um why he have to uh you know uh tell the people that um he is actually obedient to the law because um even in the gospel he always referred that that he is actually um you know the law of god is the law the or the old testament was abolished through christ and uh, and we are not under the law we are under the grace then why he has to uh tell the people and when even though he was he took this challenge he took this uh, pain he said that i'm ready to take even the prophets wanted so why he has to purify when he is knowing he is knowing that the ultimate purification is only in Christ. So why he did that? That's my question. And uh, was uh, you know Paul changed his mind or something like that? I just want to thank you. Okay, uh, Shikumar, very uh, important question there. When we study the Book of Romans, uh, we understand that um, um, we are saved by grace. Okay, we are saved by grace through faith. Um, that is very, very clear. Uh, and so Paul was propagating faith and grace. So he was not about law. You know, that, that is absolutely settled uh, as far as Paul's teaching is concerned. But if you recall, you know, we've seen earlier uh, in Acts 14, end of Acts 14, Acts 15, this whole thing about circumcision of the uh, Gentiles was a question uh, and they settled the matter. But when you start off with uh, uh, Acts 16, uh, in Lystra, he takes Timothy and he circumcises him. At that point, I had explained to us that, you know, it is not about uh, his, not that his understanding changed or his belief changed. No, he's still a believer in grace. He's still a believer in faith. But, you know, there is something about uh, giving offense to the people, okay, uh, which Paul did not want. So, uh, once again. Yeah, so in 1 Corinthians, he actually talks about it. Uh, 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 32, where he says, give no offense either to the Jews or to the Greeks or to the church of God. So that is the premise. That is the basis on which, you know, Paul goes with these four uh, Jewish men to the temple uh, to, you know, uh, see them offer their vows and, and pays for them because there is a misunderstanding about him and he does not want that misunderstanding to to remain okay so his faith has not changed but if there is something you know that is disturbing the hearts of his brothers his jewish brothers about him that hey you know paul doesn't uphold jewish customs he does not want that of to carry on you know, so that's the kind of life he lived. So give no offense to the Jews, give no offense to the Greeks, give no other, uh, offense to the church of God. So in other words, in a simple way, it's like your testimony matters. Not that, uh, you know, uh, that particular perception or reputation is going to change your position before God, but 
it can change your um, access into people's hearts especially when you know you're a leader especially when you are uh, teaching the word of god and people are following uh, what what you are uh, speaking to them so from that understanding you know paul had to do something about this matter okay so i i hope i'm making sense uh, shri kumar yes pastor yes yes thank you thank you okay pastor. Okay, sure. So uh, let me just uh, quickly read that First Corinthians ten verses thirty two and thirty three. Um, uh, it's here in front of me. It says, "Give no offense either to the Jews or to the Greeks or to the Church of God, just as I also please all men in all things, not seeking my own profit, but the profit of many, that they may be saved." So you see there, it's very clear. That is the reason. he does some things which may seem like they are against his own teaching but what he's trying to do is he's trying to win the favor of people in a healthy way so that the gospel can continue to be proclaimed thank you pastor thank you yeah sure thank you uh, very um, you know pertinent uh, question there anything else before we move on so now you know we we've seen that uh, Paul has asked for an opportunity to speak. Okay, so let's read uh, Acts twenty-two then. Okay, who would like to read? Uh, we could read Acts twenty-two from verse one to verse twenty-one. Can I read this? Yes. Okay. Um, the brethren and fathers hear my defense before you now, and when they heard that he spoke to them in the in the Hebrew language, they kept all the more silent. Then he said, "I am indeed a Jew, born in Tarsus of Sicilia, but brought up in this city, at the feet of Gamaliel." Uh, taught according to the strict strictness of our father's law and was zealous towards toward God as you all are today. I persecuted this way to the death, binding and delivering into prison both men and women. Also, as also the high priest bears me witness, and all the consuls of the elders from whom I also received letters to the brethren and went to Damascus to bring in chains, even those who were there. To Jerusalem to be punished. Now it happened as I journeyed and came near Damascus to tell up uh, at about noon. Suddenly a great light from heaven shone around me, and I fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to me, "Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me?" So I answered, "Who are you, Lord?" And he said to me, "I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom you are uh, persecuting." And those who were with me. Uh, indeed, saw the light and were afraid, but they did not hear the vo uh, voice of him who spoke to me. So I said, "What shall I do, Lord?" And the Lord said to me, "Arise and go, uh, go into Damascus, and there you will be, you will be told all things which are appointed for you to do." And since I could not see for the glory of that light being led, being led by the hand of those who were with me, I came into Damascus. Then a certain, uh, then a certain Ananias, a devoted, a devout man according to the law, having a good testimony with all the Jews who dwelt there, came to me, and he stood and said to me, "Brother Saul, receive your sight." At that same hour, I looked up at him, and he said to me, "The God of our fathers has chosen you that you should uh, know His will, and see the just, uh, just one, and hear the voice of His mouth, for you will bear His." You will be his witness to all men of what you have seen and heard. And now, why are you, why are you waiting? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Now it happened when I returned to Jerusalem and was praying, praying in the temple that I was in a trance and saw, and saw him saying to me, "Make haste and get out of Jerusalem quickly, for they will not receive your testimony concerning me." So I said, "Lord." 
And they know that in every synagogue I imprisoned and beat those who believe in you. And when the blood of uh, and when the blood of your martyr Stephen was shed, I also was standing by consenting to his death and guarding the clothes of those who were killing him. Then he said to me, Depart for I will send for I will send you far far from here to the Gentiles. So Okay. Yes, thank you. Uh, so here we uh, notice that, uh, you know, Paul has an opportunity to uh, share about his experience. Uh, and this experience, we've talked about it earlier, and I've referred to uh, Acts 22 uh, to describe Paul's life a little bit, his the origins, like he was uh, born and brought up in Tarsus, uh, Cilicia, and uh, uh, he learned under Gamaliel, one of, one of the best uh, teachers of his time, and how he persecuted the Church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, the encounter that he had, you know, on the road to Damascus, and how Ananias came and ministered to him, uh, and you know, God called him, gave him uh, an agenda and uh, an assignment to go preach the gospel. Um, and then, you know, he talks about how uh, God also spoke to him and said that, you know, Jews will not listen, so go to the Gentiles. He also makes a mention of the um, uh, killing of Stephen, for which he himself gave consent and we saw that right in acts chapter 7 that uh, paul was part of the team right which went against uh, stephen and he was very much present there but the moment he brings up the term gentile so you see there's a lot of tension among the communities uh, in jerusalem they the jews hated the gentiles so the moment he brings up the term gentile still now they're happy to listen to him because he's speaking in the Hebrew language. He is also, uh, he had also let them know that he is a Jew, okay, with this amazing background. So all that causes them to accept what Paul is saying. But when he brought up the term Gentiles, they lost it. Okay, so they didn't want to listen to him anymore. So let's go ahead and read from verse 22 um, to... Verse 30, please. Uh, maybe somebody else could read it. Quite a number of us on the call. So it'll be nice for us to share the responsibility. OK, you want me to volunteer you? Call out names. Anyone, anyone who can. Pastor, can I read? Yes, Abhishek. Yes, please. Uh, uh, chapter 22 from verse. Okay. Mm, chapter 22, you can read from verse uh, 22 to verse 30. Verse 30. Okay. Mm. And uh, to him until this word, and they raised their voice raised their voice and said away with such a fellow from the earth for he is not too fit to live then as they cry out and tore off their clothes and threw dust into the air the commander or the uh, ordered him to be brought into the barrack and said that he should be examined under scourging so that he why they shouted so against him and as they bound him with Thongs, Paul said to the centurion who stood by, Is it lawful for you to scorch a man who is a Roman and uncondemned? When the centurion heard that, he went and told the commander and said, Take care what you do, for this man is a Roman. Then the commander came and said to him, Tell me, are you a Roman? He said, Yes. The commander answered, With a large sum, I obtained this citizenship. And Paul said, But I was born a citizen. Then immediately those who were about to examine him withdrew from him. And the commander was also afraid after he uh, he found out that he was a Roman and because he had bound him. 
the next day because he wanted to know for certain why he was accused by the jews he released him from his bond and commanded the chief priests and all their council to appear and brought paul down and set him before them amen yes uh, thank you abhishek so uh, as we can see here uh, sorry, I, I said that he revealed himself as a Roman. No, but he revealed himself as a Jew. And at this point, he revealed himself as a Roman because uh, they took him under custody. They bound him. They beat him. Kiskoging refers to, uh, you know, a severe form of uh, beating. Uh, they they use, um, you know, um, uh, I don't know what it is. They say like ropes uh, with metal ends so you know with that they beat you so it literally uh, gets the flesh off of your your body and your bones so it's a pretty um, bad kind of beating uh, that uh, paul went through but when when he was going through all this he revealed that he's a roman citizen so when he reveals the fact that he's a Roman citizen. I already mentioned to us, it was not easy to be a Roman citizen in those times. And uh, to his advantage, he was born a Roman citizen. So the commander got scared. And he wanted to uh, examine this, this uh, situation a little more in detail uh, because there was a proper process that needed to be followed uh, for Roman citizens. So he goes ahead and calls the chief priests and everyone so that they can come to a conclusion what to do with this man. Are the accusations real about him? So this is where we are at and we can continue reading uh, let's move on to acts chapter 23 uh, and i would need another volunteer uh, please to to read the passage that follows you may read from verse 1 to verse 10 pastor am i audible yes yes you are paul looked at the council members and said brothers i have lived my life in a good way before god and i have always done what I thought was right. Ananias the high priest was there. When he heard this, he told the man who was standing near Paul to hit him in the mouth. Using the law of Moses, but you are telling them to hit me, and that is against the law. The man standing near Paul said to him, Are you sure you want to insult God's high priest like that? Paul said, Brothers, I did not know this man was high priest. The scripture says, you must not say bad things about a leader of your people. Paul knew that some of the men in a council meeting were seducers and some were Pharisees. So he shouted, my brothers, I am a Pharisee and my father was a Pharisee. And I am, a, and I am on trial here because I believe that Paul will rise from death. When Paul said to this, a big argument started between the Pharisees and the seducers. The group was divided. The seducers believed that after, after people die, they will not live again as an angel or, the, or as a spirit. But the Pharisees believed in both. All these Jews began shouting louder and louder. Some of the teachers of the law, who were Pharisees, stood up and argued. We find nothing wrong with this man. Maybe an angel or a spirit really did speak to him. The argument turned into a fight, and the commander was afraid that Jews would tear their pole to places. Or to pieces. So he told so he told the soldier to go down and take Paul away from these Jews and put him in the army building. Okay, so we see that uh, the command's attempt was not very successful. So he took Paul uh, before the Sanhedrin, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the high priests. So Ananias, there's another person. So don't confuse, you know, Ananias uh, uh, of um, Ananias and Sapphira, Acts 5, uh, Ananias, Acts 9, who goes and prays for Paul. And there's another Ananias. This is the high priest. So the high priest uh, brings uh, uh, Paul. And when you know Paul is saying that he lived a life which is uh, good before God and man, he gets very offended. He's like, why would you be uh, an offender standing? Uh, why would you be... Um, a prisoner standing before us if your life was so right so you know he he asks somebody to strike paul 
uh, you know on his uh, face so when when uh, paul is hit uh, he immediately rebukes the high priest uh, and you know he says something like whitewashed wall uh, so at that point uh, paul is uh, uh, paul, you know it is revealed to paul that uh, this person is actually the high priest so look at look at the humility of paul that you know he wants to do what is right by the word of god he did it by mistake so he admits his mistake he says oh, i'm so sorry i didn't know you're know, the high priest because uh, this is what we have been commanded that we must not speak anything evil uh, you know against uh, uh, god's people so paul is doing his best to do what is right by the law to do what is right by the word of god the scriptures uh, and also the jewish customs so this is how his ministry is he's trying his best to do what is right uh, but uh, understanding that it may not help you know this this audience may not help resolve the matter he uses his wisdom you know just the way even jesus used his wisdom when he knew that the pharisees and the sadducees are there together he knew that there is a bone of contention and that is resurrection so he brings up that matter he brings up the topic of resurrection and the audience is divided you know the pharisees are saying there's nothing wrong with this man while the sadducees are saying no you know he he is uh, an offender and be, more than solving the problem it caused chaos it caused a fight to break out between the pharisees and the sadducees and remember the commanders never wanted that to happen so you don't want uh, any chaos because it was dangerous in the uh, in the roman context so immediately the the commander thinks let's it's better we get this guy out of this place uh, uh, because uh, if we don't he will be pulled to pieces verse 10 says so they took him away now uh, we'll just read the next passage here and probably you know stop uh, till there so this is from verse 11 to verse 22 we would need uh, another person to kindly read this but by the following night the lord stood by him and said be of good cheer paul for you have testified for me in jerusalem so you must also bear witness at rome and when it was day some of the jews banded together and bound themselves under oath saying that they would neither drink to eat or drink till they had killed paul now there was there were more than 40 who had formed this conspiracy they came to the high priest sort sorry they came to the chief priest and elders and said we have bound ourselves under a great oath that we have that we will eat nothing until we have killed paul now you therefore together with the council suggest to the commander that he be brought down to you tomorrow as though you were going to make further inquiries concerning him but we are ready to kill him before he comes near so when paul's sister's son heard of their ambush he went and entered the barracks and told paul then paul called one of the centurions to him and said take this young man to the commander for he has something to tell him so he took him and brought him to the commander and said paul the the prisoner called me to him and asked me to bring this young man to you he has something to say to you then the commander took him by the hand went aside and asked privately what is it that you have to tell me and he said the jews have agreed to ask that you bring paul down to the council tomorrow as though they are going to inquire more fully about him and do not yield to them for more than 40 of them lie in wait for him men who have bound themselves by an oath that they will neither eat nor drink till they have killed him and now they are ready waiting for the promise from you so the commander let a let a let the young man depart and commanded him tell no one that you have revealed these things to me
All right. So um, what we will do is, because we've run out of time, thank you, uh, Christopher, for reading it. Uh, we will just pick up from here. I will explain this and continue on. Um, uh, yeah, please bear with me. I know we are, we are reading quite a bit, but then we, we uh, it'll give us a better understanding. I, I know I summarized it and that in some way is sufficient. However, we'll just go through, we'll just read through until uh, chapter 28 we should be done by next class hopefully uh, and then you know i'll i'll give you some highlights about paul's life uh, i'm trying to wrap up our sessions in the next week but if it doesn't happen it may spill over uh, to you know the following week as well so anyway let's uh, pray and close because you have another class to catch uh, uh Siddhant, can you lead us in prayer yes, Father, we thank you for this time, for the class, for all the teaching, for the life of Apostle Paul. Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the faith and encouraging us from your word. We thank you for all things, Lord. Let your word teach us and build us. Lord. We surrender to your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Siddhan. Thank you, everyone. God bless you. Uh, your assignment will be up soon uh, and uh, yeah before the next class you'll get your answer sheets your marks as well so have a good weekend we will connect uh, next week thank you bye for now